The Galapagos is an incredible destination, but it's so remote it can be intimidating. Sure, you can book an incredibly expensive cruise or go with a tour company, but it's not only possible, but incredibly enjoyable to do it on your own. In this video, we'll cover the ins and outs of San Cristobal. Why San Cristobal? Well, it's because of the locals. Besides the memorable locals, why go to San Cristobal? Well, it has a bit of everything, really. If you only have a few days in the Galapagos, five or fewer, I'd recommend San Cristobal as your one island. There's enough to see on the island itself for two or more days, plus there's a host of day trips that'll let you check off almost everything from your wildlife checklist. You won't have to worry about long travel times like on Santa Cruz, and you can fly directly to San Cristobal from the mainland, unlike Isabella. Even if you have a longer trip in the Galapagos, San Cristobal is definitely worth a visit, and I had some of my most memorable encounters there. There's two ways of getting to San Cristobal. There's a small airport that has LATAM, Avianca, and TAME service to Guayaquil connecting onto Quito, and MTB and Fly Galapagos serve the other islands as well. Or, if you're coming from Puerta Ayora on Santa Cruz by speedboat ferry, the trip takes about two hours. You'll need to pay 50 cents for the harbor taxi, though the welcome committee at the dock was a bit lackadaisical. The town itself is quite small. Like the rest of the Galapagos, all taxis are white pickup trucks, and it costs only $1 to go anywhere in the main town, including the airport. Key places to be aware of is the ferry pier, called Hammerhead, that has ferry boats to Santa Cruz, and the Aquarium Pier, where all the day tour boats depart from. Let's cover the things to see starting in the main town, Puerto Bacarizo Moreno, and work outwards. Walking north, the first beach you'll see is Playa Man. There's some inexpensive Ecuadorian places serving lunch here for $5, and you'll often find the sea lions outnumber the humans. Follow the path to arrive at the Interpretation Center, which has some exhibits on the history of the Galapagos and examples of unique evolution. From the back of the Interpretation Center, there's a trail that leads further north. There's Muye Tejeritas, a secluded bay that's a great place to snorkel with sea lions if you bring your own gear. A statue of the man himself, Charles Darwin, as well as several lookout points. A much longer hike continues to a small beach, Playa Bancarizo. Finally, if you head west, you'll arrive at Playa Punta Carola, or Lover's Beach. A great place to watch sunsets to the dulcet romantic sounds of sea lions. There's a beach to the south of the airport as well, Playa Loberia, that is known for having even more sea lions and sea turtles. For the rest of the island, you'll need a taxi. I was able to share a taxi with some fellow travelers from my hotel for $20 a person. There's four places to see accessible on the one road, and the whole trip takes half a day. The furthest point is Puerto Chino, a small secluded bay with beautiful views and a lot of wildlife. Backtracking a bit, you can't miss the giant tortoise breeding center, with a large area with tortoises roaming about. and baby tortoises at various stages being raised in pens. These tortoises are reintroduced into the wild, mostly at the highlands on the other end of the island. The third point of interest is the volcano, which is a brief but steep hike. Like Hawaii, the Galapagos is full of microclimates. It's only five minutes to the arid beach, but here, on the spine of the island, it's a tropical rainforest. The crater was blanketed in fog, 
but we could make out frigate birds bathing themselves in the fresh water. Quite interestingly, this marine bird does not have waterproof feathers, so they gingerly wash their torsos in the fresh water whilst remaining airborne. Finally, a newer attraction is La Casa del Ciebo, a massive treehouse and novelty pit stop with a $2 admission fee. Not really my thing, but it's wacky for sure, and you can even spend the night there. Let's conclude our look at San Cristobal with a review of some of the excursions available. By far the most popular is the 360 tour that circumnavigates the island. I didn't do this, and the guides I spoke with recommended against it. You just spend so much time on the boat, there isn't sufficient time for each place to stop. The most famous attraction is Kicker Rock, a twin formation off the coast. that is both a great snorkel spot for large marine life, as well as a dive site known for large schools of hammerhead sharks. But believe it or not, I only waved at Kicker Rock as I went by. Instead, I went to Punta Pit, which was on the far end of the island. Anchoring at a remote bay, you take a zodiac to a secluded beach. Say hello to the welcome committee, before hiking for an hour on a desolate but strikingly beautiful landscape. In this inhospitable wasteland, life manages to thrive. This is the only place where you'll see all three kinds of boobies living together. Blue-footed, red-footed, and Nazca. Each occupies a different competitive niche, nests in different places, and eats different fish, so they don't actually compete with each other. The blue-footed boobies nest on the ground. The red-footed are always in the trees. And the Nazca boobies live on the ocean cliffs. I've been to so many remote places in my travels, but I've never been so moved thinking I had reached the end of the world that I had here in Punta Pit. The second place I took a day trip to was Española Island, which was by far the most expensive excursion I booked at $220. After a two hour boat ride where half of the boat threw up, we arrived on the desolate shores. Española is one of, if not the oldest island in the Galapagos, and is geologically speaking dying. All of the volcanic activity has ended, and the desolate rock is being battered and eroded back into the ocean. But don't tell that to the thriving life on the island. As with most trips, it included both snorkeling and hiking. We snorkeled first, and found an incredibly playful sea lion wanting to check us out. Other sea lions were hunting, or playing with a sea turtle. The sheer volume of life in the ocean was simply staggering. On land, Española is known for large colonies of Nazca boobies, but even more spectacularly is home to waved albatrosses. The only albatrosses near the equator, they have a wingspan of over eight feet. They only breed on one island in the world from April through December, and yes, it's Española. They fly as far as mainland Ecuador to hunt for fish. They really were remarkable and definitely worth a visit if you're there in the right season. So hopefully you've now got a sense of what San Cristobal has to offer. There's not as many excursions available as in Santa Cruz, and it's not as relaxing or beautiful as Isabella. But it's a jack-of-all-trades island that really gives a representative slice of the Galapagos. I spoke with several tourists for whom this was their only island, and they were over the moon with what it had to offer. 
Thanks for watching. If you liked this video or found it helpful, please give it a like and subscribe for more travel videos or my more traditional flight reviews. I'll see you next time in Santa Cruz.